but uh, Okay. Uh, make buttons. Is that what you want to do? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Um, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I can make buttons. How to make buttons in Pi Game? Make a button class with the text to go on the button as a constructor argument. Create a Pygame surface, either of an image or a filled rect. Render text on it with the font.render stuff in Pygame. Split to game screen. Save that rect. check on mouse click to see if mouse.getPosition matches a coordinate in the rect that it returned by the blit of the button to the main surface. I'm not, well, I know how to make a button class. <laughs> um, some of the vocabulary I'm not super familiar with. Uh, so a surface, not exactly sure. Blit, not exactly sure. Uh, Another way is by installing a package called Pygame Widgets. So Pygame Widgets, PW button while running, button.listen events. Button dot draw. Okay. So I guess Pi Game Widgets is another way. Um, ah, so here's surface is whatever is returned by set mode window size. So this is a surface. Okay. Um, Uh, go ahead and try searching, see if you can find how do you make a button in Pygame. Yeah. Also, I don't see your screen.
Uh, well, this is like just straight up the code. Um. Oh, I just stubbed my toe. Fuck. Oh no. Okay. We good. I think. Okay. We good. Um. So, do you want to try uh, just taking that code? I mean, sure. Do you want to try um, deriving code, like reading it, understanding what it does, and then making something like that in our code? I think that is... A little sounds a little better. Okay. Um, go ahead and send me the link that you're at the Python code article. Make a button. Okay. Okay, um, so how to make buttons in Pygame. Learn how to make buttons in Pygame that support pressed calling, multiple pressing, multi pressing, and one shot pressing in Python. Uh, Okay. Idea. In this article, we are going to make a button class in Pygame in Python, which can be utilized different ways. We make it. We make it so the button calls custom calls a custom function when pressed. It also we also enable it to support different support pressed calling and one shot calling. One shot pressing. Okay. Last but not least, we build a system for multi multiple buttons. 
so they dynamically get drawn without having to add them to a list manually. Let us start. Yeah, well, um, we will have all this. I think. Um. Uh, yeah, we have something similar to this stuff. Oh, I kind of like this idea. Um, so here, they did, uh, with height equals 600, 600, width, height, and then they don't have to do this. They can say height. And so on. I just realized that I didn't really check whether or not the variables width and height were already in use. <laughs> um, so I just went Are through there? and checked. No, we're we're good on that. Nice. Um, so what? I guess we should try it out, make sure that it still works. It says the width is not defined. Um. Oh, that's a minus, that's why. Huh. Oh, brother. Okay, yeah, it works. Yeah, mine works too. Very nice. Okay. Um. All right. 
right, so in this article, we're going to make a button class in Python, which can be utilized in different ways. One shot, blah, 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 let us start. Imports and setup. Before we make the button class, we need to set up a viable Pygame window before we import. Therefore, we import uh, sys and Pygame. Um, we have that. Wait, is this still a problem? Wait. What? So like this. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> uh so we said that it maxes out at fifty of whatever the line two forty two for you. Oh, yeah. It'll never get bigger than 50. But it's uh, still a problem that... Um, when you hit the... Can't... The close button, it keeps going until a bounce occurs and then it stops and we don't know why. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, sis will be needed later to shut down the window. I think we... Oh, we don't use sys. How do we shut down the window? Pygame not quit. I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Where is it? Here. Oh, we detect pygame dot quit, then we set running to false. Uh, and then that breaks us out of the loop, and then we hit the pygame.quit. Uh, I think that's probably fine. Um, we continue by making the screen. After that, we load a font, which we will use later. We will later use in the buttons. You can use whatever you font you want, but I'll choose Arial for this tutorial. I let uh, make a list of uh, called objects. We will later need this for the buttons and the dynamic drawing. Okay, so this idea, um, we haven't needed to do anything like that, but here where we have ball dot update and ball dot draw. Um, you could imagine if we had, like, more things, we would have to do this for every single one of the things that we have. Yeah. And, uh, they just have a list, and then they do a four each. Um, and then they make it so that every single object has a... I think they called it process. <laughs> yeah, they called it process. Okay. So, I guess we could do something like that. Um, so, let's see if we can even do this. Or if this causes the game to lock up or something. Oh, this is interesting. They have an explicit frames per second variable. I wonder how that comes into play. That's interesting. Um, yeah, let's see what happens when we do that. Does it work? No. Pygame.error. Uh...
font not initialized. Do they do hmm. Does it work for you? Just putting this line in? It's not running, but oh yeah, it works. I think did you put it app did you put it before or after the init, right? Does that do anything? Um, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, that worked. Huh. Okay. Cool. So it had to be after this. Um, okay, then they get a screen, and they create a list of objects, I guess we could do that. So... Yeah, go ahead and make a list of objects. And for now, it'll be empty. Um, button class initialization. Okay, so yeah, let's do class button and make an init method, def init, and then we need self and uh, arguments for x, y, width and height, x, y, width, Height, um, text, I guess. Uh, and text in the button, the function, which will be called F, I guess. We could, for now, just save these options in the object. So, how would you do that? What's F? Um. <laughs> the function which will be called and whether the button will be pressed once. So uh, it's the function that will be called. Oh, okay. So self dot function is just whatever we set the function to. Yeah. Um. And the whole, whether the function will be called, whether the button will be pressed once or multiple times, um, I'm not sure. Uh, 
Oh, this is a good name. So on click function equals whatever and one press equals true or false. So yeah, maybe instead of F, this can be on click on click on click. So uh, what to do on a click. Um, and this one press thing, I think this is, um, this is like whether it does something immediately when it goes from not clicked to not pressed to pressed, like on that one frame. I think this is that. It could no, either do I, that. I was blanking oh, out. what? Go ahead. I was I, I was blanking out. Can you say that again? Sorry. Um. So you know how a light switch, when you it, flip the light switch, the light goes from off to on. Um, and then, what's a different example? You can go with the same thing you were saying earlier. I just wasn't, uh, I was, like, staring off into somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I can say, uh, so what I said before was something like, um, whether the button is does something immediately when it's clicked versus does something as long as it's held down. Okay. Um, I think that's what's, what this is about. This one press is like, do something immediately when it goes from not clicked to clicked. And then... The alternative is do something as long as it's being pressed. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure. So on click on hold, I think. I think this would be a better way of dealing with that. Um, hold. And these could have default of none. None. <laughs> none. So this one fires when it goes from, like, on the one frame, when it goes from not clicked to clicked. And this one fires as long as it's being held. Mm hmm Wait. What? No, the on click is wait. Isn't the on click just the function that we're doing, and then on hold is like, do we keep repeating the function or just do it once? Um. Well, I guess I guess it's up to us what we want to do. I was thinking we could have one function that call that gets one action that happens when it goes from not clicked to clicked. And a different action potentially that happens when it goes from uh, what th this gets called, whatever this is set to, gets called while the button is being held down. And so you could just set this to none 
and set this action, and then that would be how you make the button only do something right when it's clicked. Okay. Um, and so, like, if you do it this way, then you have... Um, you have the opportunity to do stuff like on click, on hold, on release. So uh, you could be, you could do more, more options than just is it clicked, is it being held down. Uh, there's more more things that you could have a function for. You could have a function for uh, when it goes from up to down, while it's down, when it goes from down to up, and then uh, on I don't know what you would call it not held. <laughs> Uh, so this is like something that happens as long as the button isn't being pressed. Anyway, uh, it seems to me like this uh, is kind of an odd... I don't know. This feels weird. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we don't have to do that. We could do it more like what they do. Well, I think this. we could we can add our we we can do this. Okay. So. All right. So then, uh, oh yeah, we could have a hover state too, like while the mouse is over the button but not yet clicking it. Um. So on hover. Can it just be hover? Uh, Does it have to be hover? So I guess so. So instead of on click, it could be click. Oh, I thought. Well, I feel like. Oh, oh, I guess on. Oh, oh like when hover. So I actually no. I think that makes sense. Never mind. Anyway, <clears throat> um, maybe for now, let's just do an on click and an on hold, and we can fill in those other ones later. If we decide that that's useful. Alrighty. Um, okay, so taking the XY coordinates width and the height, uh, the function which will be called and whether the button will be pressed once. Yeah, so now we have, instead of the function which will be called, we have opportunity to set many different functions that could be called for various things that happen to the button. Um, we map all these information to variables in the object. We also define some colors for the three states the button will have, normal, hover, and pressed. Um, <laughs> Ah, self dot fill colors, normal hover and pressed. Uh, I guess we could do that. Let's what? see. What's up? Nothing. I thought something was funky, but it's not. So I guess normally it will be white. Huh. 
hover, it'll be gray. And pressed, it'll be dark gray. Self dot back. I call this background colors because the text color is also a color. I guess it could be text and, but the, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What color should the text be? Uh, I don't know the, the different things, but we can do, <laughs> sorry, I have hella allergies right now or something. Yeah, a lot of people do. I got them pretty bad, uh, like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, um, text can be. Your yeah, background is pink, the button is white. I mean, it can be, I don't even know. Let's just put a random assortment of numbers and hope it looks like something. Does that work? Yes. Uh, so it has to be six hexadecimal numbers. I don't know. Four, five, two. Four, five, eight, two, three, four. Four, five, eight, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, the generic form is these two are how much red these two are how much green and these two are how much blue so this will is this have just a, is this what? just gonna be an ugly brown um it's gonna have about as much red as blue and then a bit more green so i think it'll be a green a dark green a little bit red and a little bit less blue I don't know what that ends up being I think that's like a really I think that's a dark green closer to brown type than black dark I like green Sounds good. Right. Um, oh, I need a comma there. Okay. Let's see. Uh, after we set up the variables, we t we make the button surface and the button rect. Here we use the values defined above. <coughs> we also make a surface that contains the button text. Here we use the font variable we defined earlier to call the render method on it. I think I skipped something. Oh, on click, one press, already pressed. So yeah, so I think we need to save what state it is in. Um, Self.state, initially it is, uh, What would you call it? Neutral. Yeah. So, what state is
So there's buttons in your car, right? Yes. And you're not in your car. What would you call the state of the buttons in your car right now while you're not in it? Cool. <laughs> what? One, one, they're not pressed. Two. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Or they might not even be there. You you never know. Um, because you know they might not be there. Because I, they, what if they just like appear only when you're there or someone is there? You know, magic buttons. <laughs> then like the cat problem, like you don't know if the cat died or not. Oh. Yeah, and the, uh... Dead and alive. Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. Um. Alright, and then... Yeah, I like that idea. What are the... What are the possible states? Uh... So we have... Not... Pressed... Uh, pressed. Oh, um, I am getting a phone call. Uh, hold on a sec. Oh, wait. Um, hello? Okay, I'm back. Wait. Um. I don't know. Something like just clicked. Seems like it might be a state. And released. So we go from not pressed to clicked to pressed to released. I think that would be the cycle. Um, so, the buttons in your car are just chilling. They are not pressed. When they go from up to down, that instant they are clicked. And if you keep holding them, they are pressed. And then when they go from down to up, on that instant, they are released, and then as long as they stay that way, they are not pressed. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to save what state it's in. I feel like it'd be cool to somehow save this as maybe maybe this actually has an ordering to it so it should be a list we can call this self dot states something like that and then the current state is saved in this variable um I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Let's see where the, the code takes us. Um, after we set up the variables, we make the button surface and the button rect. Okay, so we're going to do something like that down here. We also make the surface that contains a button text. Here we use the font variable we defined earlier and call the render method on it. Self.button surface. Self.surface. 
Um, I'm going to call this surface because we are in the button class, so seems like we don't really need to say yeah. that it's a button. Or, or we could go the other way and say Python uh, button ball game surface. Eh? Because then, because we are in Python and we are making a button and this is the ball game thingy. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a great name. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Maybe I will regret this and it should have. Anyway, uh, pi game dot surface self dot width self dot height. Okay, pi game dot surface self slash self. I don't really need to do that. We can do width height. Um. Rect pi game dot rect x y width height um so Surface, I think, is like something that can be drawn on, and then rect is a location, or not not just a location, but like a an an area where the drawing might go, where this surface might go. I'm not super sure. And then button surf. Oh wow, these names are terrible. <laughs> button surface, button surf. This is the one for the text. I'm gonna call that. Well, actually, I will. I will ask you. What do you? How do you? What do you think? What would you what call this, it? What What is this? What is this for? So this one is for the button. which is the class that we are in. This one is for the text. Oh. And they called it button surf because surface was already taken. <laughs> um, I mean, this can be... So they have t two surfaces. One is for the, the button, like the, the whole button. And one is for the text that goes on the button. Can we not just go... Let, uh, text, sir. Mm -hmm. Don't we have the, the 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 text? Don't we go colors and then dot text? Oh, you have to go there. Do you need the self? Depends on how you declared this. If you declared it like this, then yes. Okay. Or defined it, whatever. I'm not exactly sh I think this would be called defining. Assign? Depends on what you assigned it to. If you assigned it to self.colors, then you need to get self.colors here. Okay. I suppose you could do something like 
colors is equal to that. Self dot colors is equal to colors. And then here you can just do colors. Okay, I don't know if that saves much. It does not. <laughs> it is a negative save, as in it adds more. Um. Okay, last but not least, I think it would be good to learn, like, what are surfaces, or at least I don't know what, what those are. Um, uh, learn what is a surface. Um, learn... Some vocabulary. What is a surface lit rect? Okay. Last but not least, we append the object itself to the objects list. Later, we will loop over this list to call all the process functions from the buttons. Objects.append self. Okay. Um, wait. Oh yeah, we declared objects up here. So... I guess we could do that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's do that for now. Objects dot append self. Um I don't like the idea of Well, I guess the game is pretty small and self-contained and all that, so this is okay. But uh, it does seem like a potential pitfall later on to have this variable and then later uh, use it like this. Um, a better thing to do would be to maybe pass in objects... And, or like, parent, and then do something here like parent.register self. Um, this is a, a much more common, uh, why is it complaining? Oh, because I have it after. Um, so, hold on a sec, okay, there, all right, um, so this is, this is a, 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 a better way of doing, like, rather than having just a list of all the objects, um, having a parameter that says what this thing's immediate parent is, and then registering itself with the parent um, is better, uh, for reasons, um, why, um, I'm not sure if I can quickly come up with an example right now of when you would see the difference. The generic problem with doing it this way is 
now this button class uh, modifies this objects thing and it doesn't have objects in this parameter list um, so later on in the code if you have like button or I don't know go faster button equals button this now modifies the um, let's say we, we're doing this at position zero zero and it has width 100 height 200 um, and then it has an on click function of uh, I got clicked and then the last parameter is left off so it's null uh, or none um, this line modifies the objects array but there's no mention of the objects array on this line uh -huh. it, it modifies the objects array because this line is in the initializer um, but there's no mention of that here and that is a common source of bugs. Hmm. Um, so if you made it so that you had to say right here, objects, now objects is mentioned on this line. So you at least have a little bit more uh, information that this is potentially modified here. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you make this be a parameter, you could you could potentially have like buttons. You could have a separate list for specifically for buttons and then another list for all the different balls on the screen or something. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like a versatility reason to not use a global um, but for now uh, since the tutorial has it that way let's do it that way uh, and also this project is not too big so I think we can just remember that we have this global objects array and that button adds itself to that objects array. Um, it would probably make sense for ball to add itself to that array as well. Like every time a ball is created, we could add it to that array. Um, I'm now realizing that something that we haven't tried at all is making multiple balls. Um, I see no oh. reason that that shouldn't work, but uh, we haven't done it. Um, you want to so, do it? Uh, I do, but also my alarm just went off, so I'm going to put that as something in here. Uh, whoop. Man, I hate it when I do that. Okay, wrecked. Okay, to do... Make multiple balls. Okay. Um. So so yeah, learn some of these things. We are still here, so I'm gonna leave. Continue here next time, because we're still in the middle of doing this. Yes. Um. All right. So go ahead and make a commit. All right. Uh, and I'll go check. Pretty sure mine has been, yeah, it's been committing all along. Um, 
So I know I've asked you about uh, recording and putting it on YouTube, but I don't know if I've asked you about, like, is it okay if I publish the code? I don't know why it wouldn't be. I oh, think... yeah, I I think that's fine. Yeah? Okay. Um, cool, I will do that. I think that would be more useful in the future to see what code is associated with the video. Yeah. Okay. All right, bye. Yeah, bye.